and everyone. And now is his moment of truth, which is, you know what? I never actually finished school. I, at least I didn't finish college. I dropped out. Now, in the movie here, we choose not to tell you exactly why. And this is the thing that was the big debate. In the deleted scenes, he does a monologue where he tells you really why. And we'll talk about that in the deleted scenes. But here, most people felt, and I agreed, that it was enough that he'd let himself down, as we so often do. And not being specific, ironically, made it more universal. That we kind of understand that many of us feel like we haven't quite achieved what we set out to achieve. It's been harder than we thought, and we're somehow disappointed in ourselves. And that's really what he captures in that moment. So here Tsotsi and his gang are back at the house. The other two, of course, don't know why they're at this particular house. Arp, of course, being the loyal friend, is saying, you know, it doesn't really matter. We're here. I love Arp's philosophy, you know. Life is good. And you're in the moment. And it's good that we're together. And don't question it. It's good. We're here. That's why we're here. And then we'll be somewhere else. And I've kind of been using this philosophy in L.A. traffic. I'm in the traffic. I'm in the traffic. It's good. Traffic will pass. I'll be somewhere else. It's good. Okay, so we're moving into the house. This uh, is a very similar scene that happened to my mother. Twice. So um, this was kind of tough. And it happened to my dad once. Of course, one of the things that happened was my mother being a wonderful and yet, bless you mum, in many ways naive person. Even when she had a gun in her face and a necklace had been ripped from her neck and she was bleeding, she wanted to talk to the kid who was probably 18, 19 and wildly out of control and my mom's going dear what can't we talk about this you know what would your mother say and it's all right and and for ages afterwards and this is before i made sortsi i don't know how to reconcile that i've i've worked in the shanty towns a lot I've, I've worked in there making educational drama programs and so on so i know the shanty towns and i know the people well but when someone shoves a gun in your mother's face you get a bit angry and i guess it was my mother saying but Gavin, he was just a kid. And I know a lot of these kids from working. And so in a way, when this project came along, I thought, you know, what is this? This is a kid who really wants to talk about his mother and talk to his mother, and he can't because she's gone. So bless you, Mom. Anyway, we're inside the house, and the other two don't quite know why they're here. And of course, Totsi is in need of exploring this zone, and he's at least established that the mother of this baby that he has is not dead, but is in the hospital. And now he's kind of looking. And he's supposed to be robbing a house, which is kind of irritating for Butcher. Butcher's role is amazing because I think that Zenzo Ngobe, the young actor here playing Butcher, I think it's worth pausing just to say I think his screen presence is so amazing because it's a nasty role to have to play. We don't get any backstory about him. And I thought about that a lot. But it seemed that, you know, one of the dangers in this film is you walk a really fine line between moving your audience and being too sentimental. We're exploring Tsotsi and he, he has reasons for being the way he is and the character of Butcher probably does too and his backstory may be even harsher. My, my kind of feeling was that he's probably never known a day of love in his life. And that's, you know, that's a tough thing to play because you can end up playing him just as a bad guy. So to pull off the fact that he really is a psychopath and quite frightening but not in a stereotypical way, I think Zenzo does a great job of being irredeemable. And he pays for that. And yet there's a movie in there somewhere too. Now, this is important. We're coming into the baby's room, which is, of course, I believe the real reason why Tsotsi has come here. Well, he's come here to find out what happened to the mom. And now, where did this person grow up? And how different it is from the way he grew up. He's not really here to rob a house. He's here to explore and work on what's going on in his head. And as he sits down on this bed amongst the sort of excess of toys, I mean, he sure didn't have that. And it's quite a sobering moment 
for those of us who grew up not in shacks, when he sort of sits down in this room full of toys and, you know, that baby did nothing to earn those toys. It's pure chance that that baby was born to those parents. And those of us who've been lucky enough to be educated and have parents who've put us through school certainly sobered me up a bit. Again, you know, the comedy within the drama and, again, both actors, I think, keep it just within the bounds without going too broad. Because this happens. I remember once coming home, I walked into my folks' bedroom and there was literally a man sitting in a chair at the foot of my parents' bed. And I, you know, the first reaction is your heart rate just goes screaming up. And then I realized he was completely drunk. And he sort of sobered up and he sort of started saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And we kind of walked him out and, and wished him well and he wandered off down the road. And that was that. So, yeah, we have some weird stories from South Africa, I guess. And, of course, now he sort of starts to try and put two and together, and this is clearly a bottle-fed baby, and what is this? And the curiosity again. Meanwhile, Butch is doing what Butcher does, which is trying to take what Butcher needs, and just juxtaposing that with the very different need that Sotsi has at this point, which is to connect with himself and with the child and with, frankly, his own inner child, which is a rather obvious metaphor, I guess, when you use a three-month-old to explore your own inner child, but there it is. And this is a powerful scene because, um, again, many people close their eyes at the moment and kind of think they've seen the person shot. And if you watch very closely, you watch how the cutting, which Megan Gill, our editor, does brilliantly here. That's just us flicking blood onto his head. From, I literally did it with my fingers. I just dipped my hand in blood and flicked it onto Rapulana's side of his head. And then you discover that it's actually Tsotsi who shot Butcher, which is a huge moment for him. And I think, again, Presley's performance here is unbelievable because he's completely torn by what he's done. He doesn't want the father of this child to be killed, but he's killed someone he's been with for many, many years. And the tension, of course, being he may yet shoot this man, even just out of confusion which is one of the things that so many of the violent crimes have in common, is that they're not premeditated. They happen randomly and suddenly and impulsively. And, and so many young gangsters that you meet will tell you that, I just pulled the trigger. And that's what we were talking about earlier in this country, talking about how violence can be so sudden, and yet it has such massive consequences for Everyone involved in that act, for the rest of your life, for the rest of their life, that sudden moment changes everything. And he lets him go, and there's this strange connection that happens, which, of course, the mother of the baby has never had. And we see how that pays off at the end of the film, where there's more understanding from this father. 